buying 3M stock is the topic of today's presentation. And if you're somebody that's invested in 3M stock, as we are, then you're probably aware of some of the drama that's happening with lawsuits. If you're not invested in 3M stock, then you're probably eyeing up that close to 6% yield on the stock and wondering if it's a good buy. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, I wanted to start a little bit on innovation and the humble post-it note, which sort of epitomizes 3M as a company. So it's a fascinating story, and it was a mistake that led by uh, 3M researchers that led to this new adhesive uh, called acrylate copolymer microspheres. These could be peeled away without residue. And of course, you all know what post-it notes are. Everybody uses them. Well, it took nine years from this invention to a commercial product. And when it was launched, it actually flopped in its first year. Well, then in a last resort effort to uh, turn this invention into a product, they emailed out a bunch of free samples. Well, it turns out that 90% of the companies that they gave samples to reordered the product. And it became self-advertising because customers would put these notes on documents they sent other people, and then people would start using them. And persistence and the return on investment for true innovation sort of characterize the post-it note. I mean, it's been uh, top-selling, one of the best-selling products ever, I would imagine. Uh, and it's been uh, selling strong for 40 years now. And what's interesting about 3M is that they'll take a technology platform, non-wovens, for example. This is how you would bind fibers together without weaving them. Well, they built this non-woven technology platform you can see back in the 1950s. And then moving forward, they started turning that into multiple products across all their different divisions. So it started with ribbons in the 40s, and now hundreds of their products use this non-woven technology. It's been developed into almost every area of 3M. And if you're interested in understanding about how this company innovates and uh, what's turned out to be a remarkable success story, people often say, you know, is the United States falling behind? Well, the United States won't fall behind as long as she keeps innovating. That's what's made America so great is this innovative entrepreneurial spirit. So this um, 3M story, you can find this out there, a century of innovation is 250 pages long. It contains some very interesting bits. If you're an MBA or somebody studying business or innovation, then trying to learn how to uh, become an innovator, uh, this would be uh, an interesting read. Now, we look at 3M from a investment perspective, particularly their dividend history. And again, uh, something remarkable coming from a company that innovates. The ability to not only pay dividends for, it says, 100 plus years there. We don't pay much attention to that because the dividend could be anything. What we pay attention to are firms that not only pay a dividend, but increase it for more than 25 years. Well, 3M has done that for 64 years. They've consecutively increased that dividend every year. And this is an asset then that pays you an income stream that's increased for 64 years in a row. Imagine how valuable that becomes over time. And when you look at uh, the universe of dividend growth champions, that's what we've done in our strategy called Quantigence. And this is a screenshot from that report showing the top five industrials ranked by Q-score. Not only is 3M at the top, but they're at the top list of all the stocks in our universe because it's a, a company that's had a tremendous track record. I mean, the, the appeal is fairly obvious, increasing their dividend for 64 years. That's certainly a track record. They're not going to want to break. They're a conglomerate. And whenever somebody asks, you know, if I had to invest in one stock, it would have to be a conglomerate because that has the highest likelihood of survival over time because it's almost as if you're buying a collection of businesses because you are. That's what a conglomerate is. It's a collection of businesses in various industries. 3M is a great American success story, a proven innovator, but now they're running into problems. What's changed? And if you want to learn more about conglomerates and the conglomerate discount, you can look up this article, and I believe there's an accompanying video on our website. It's called Trimble Stock and the Conglomerate Discount, and it uh, presents that quite well. 
What's changed at 3M are lawsuits, and I think the title of this article by the Wall Street Journal pretty much uh, describes the problem. At 3M, lawsuits threaten to transform the company and not in a good way. Analysts say dividend cut and heavier debt load loom amid potential settlement payments costing billions. The first of those being the water lawsuits. And I'm not going to get into the details here. We're only interested in the outcome. 3M has agreed. uh, So that's what you're looking for when you have these unknowns is some certainty. So we have some certainty here that for the series of water lawsuits that they were facing, they have agreed to contribute up to a present value that's in today's dollars of $10.3 billion payable over 13 years. Well, That's interesting to note because if the majority of those payments come down the road, then that's a lot less money in today's dollars. So what they're going to expect from that is a pre-tax charge of around $10.3 billion in the second quarter of this year. And they'll reflect that as an adjustment in arriving at the result. So you can expect the market will pretend like they've, that's the first time they've seen this and it'll, it'll make the news everywhere. 3M has uh, massive losses based on this uh, payment that they're going to incur over the next 13 years. And we don't know what the cadence of that will look like and whether or not there's some consistency there. But at least we have a resolution and it's not money they need to fork over right now. Now, contrast that lawsuit to another one they're facing, which is the largest civil injury case in U.S. history with 250,000 veterans alleging that 3M's earplugs failed to protect them from hearing loss. And this is a complex topic, but I wanted to pull the talking points from 3M, their strongest talking points, which certainly they put their best foot forward. And they talk here about how attorney advertising Inadequate vetting and a lack of typical filing requirements have resulted in these more than 200,000 cases on various dockets, and all parties that may be entitled to compensation may now need to litigate on a case-by-case basis as courts across the country are now full of these cases, and we're going to talk more about that problem. Uh, They say here that the vast majority of claimants in this earplug litigation have normal hearing, and that mimics the research that we've done into analysts, legal analysts, looking at these cases, though uh, the judge uh, ultimately decides. But uh, here 3M claims that every independent third-party organization, including uh, labs from their users, found that the product was safe and effective to use. And, you know, 20 military and civilian labs tested these earplugs that were sold to the military between 1999 and 2015. None of them found anything wrong with those earplugs. So it remains to be seen. And analysts are saying this could cost anywhere from 10 to 15 billion dollars for the company, though it's a complete guess because it's unknown. I wanted to touch base very quickly on some internal growth problems and profitability problems that 3M is facing. So if you look at their latest quarterly results here, you can see the four segments, right? The diversification, it's a nice conglomerate diversified across safety and industrial, transportation, electronics, healthcare, consumer. You can see here how this last quarter compared to the same quarter in the year prior, um, look at the drop there in organic growth. And of course, there's Uh, foreign exchange impact that will result from a strengthening U.S. dollar. And then you have some M&A activities there, and then you have the total on the far right. But this organic growth is a problem for the company. And what's worse than that is when you look at business segments in terms of their profitability. And you can see here, first of all, the uh, table here on the left, adjusted operating income, you can see that drop. So profitability for these different segments. The idea of being a conglomerate is that your segments offset each other. You can see this quite well with Trimble. Well, it's not happening here for 3M. And what's worse than that is you can see the adjusted operating margin there on the right falling meaningfully, significantly for all four segments. What's going on here? Well, they have the same excuse here. It says decline, and they almost cut and paste it. It's it's rather a disheartening. Uh, Lower sales volume, manufacturing supply chain headwinds, carryover of raw material, logistics, energy cost, inflation, and of course, China COVID. That excuse is still uh, milling about. But when we look closer at their investor deck, there's also some concerns about this company's focus and what matters, and that is investors and innovation and what made 3M great. Uh, On the plus side, 
They're reducing headcount. So whenever there's a recession, it's great to trim the fat a bit. So they're reducing headcounts. The second reduction, they're expecting a run rate improvement in operating income. That's good. They're moving to resolve these weak margins. And of course, that's going to result in pre-tax charges that they're going to take a hit for up front. But what's even more concerning is this move of the company towards this uh, more diverse and equitable, equitable future. And you can see our of the presentations we've done on ESG and DEI, and we think that it's poisonous to companies and their culture. And you see here how that uh, has become a focus for 3M, and that's very concerning. What's more concerning than that even is this article by Bloomberg Law. It's quite good. It talks about how mass tort litigation is gaming the judicial system. And this analyst here says that it's entering a dangerous new phase. Mass tort action, uh, similar to class action, but and you can read this article to understand the subtle differences, but it's when one of the one or more of the legal criteria for a class action suit is not met, then they go to mass tort litigation. And these plaintiffs' lawyers are generating massive numbers of highly questionable claims against companies to force huge settlements. And now some of these companies are filing for bankruptcy to cap liability and manage claims. We see that with Johnson & Johnson as well. And it says here how a plaintiff's lawyer called a company's turn to bankruptcy for help, a contrivance by clever lawyers to gain leverage. For some, this statement dripped with irony. Indeed, these lawyers will stop at nothing. The U.S. is one of the most litigious societies in the world, and these individuals are just ambulance chasers that want a cut. And you can see that over the past decade, a mass tort generation machine has been developing, and it's largely against pharmaceutical, medical device, and consumer product manufacturers. And these companies will fund marketing campaigns. You may have seen some, for those of you that live in the States, with TV, radio, and internet ads to produce numerous plaintiffs from their customer base. These are people who may not have even been injured or haven't used the product. Nevertheless, they file lawsuits under their names. And the sheer quantity of claims, as we see in the earplug case, is intended to create a presumption among judges, juries, and the media, of course, that there must be merit to the litigation. So let's just get past that because we need to see settlement from that. And until there is, we speculating doesn't do us any good. But what we can do is look at 3M's free cash flow and learn something from this. So the table on the right shows their free cash flow for every year over the past decade. And this is the amount of cash that they have free, which they can pay dividends from or uh, settle lawsuits with, pay off uh, the plaintiffs. Uh, free cash flow dropped dramatically last year. You can see in 2022 how that just plummeted. As we saw, we understand why the business is gro growth is slowing. They're becoming less profitable. They could still at this rate pay off that $10 billion water liability in 2.5 years if they used all their cash coming from the business. So that's great, right? But they're also paying out $3.4 billion a year in dividends. So now you're going to uh, more easily see what the payout ratio looks like, right? If you generate $4 billion and you pay out $3.4 billion, your payout ratio is the percent that you paid out, right? It's quite simple. What they'll probably have to do is take on debt and reduce that dividend increase in order to keep their track record. They'll reduce their dividend growth to 1% year over year. Companies do this. They want to keep that track record. They want to run things as tightly as possible, okay? Around $4 billion in cash on their books and $13 billion in long-term debt. That means they have net $9 billion in debt. So they had peak debt at $18 billion in 2020. Well, if this earplug debacle results in a $10 billion charge, as analysts are estimating, then that could, they could eke by by uh, taking that out in debt. It depends on when that will have to be paid back, presumably in a shorter time frame than water, but we just don't know. Now, when you look at dividends for 3M, see on the, along the top there, that's what you're saying, right? You see where they started, they started to tighten their belt there. Uh, looks like around 2018 and say, wow, we need to reduce that. And then the last two years you see where they've had a 1% increase, just as we said. And on the lower left here, you can see their earnings per share. And on the right, you can see the dividends that they're paying out. See that penny increase that represents that 1%. Well, that's the gap between their earnings and what they're paying out. And 
The way that we approach dividend growth investing in our strategy, Quantigence, it's very simple. We have no decisions to make regarding 3M. If they announce they won't increase or they'll cut the dividend, we're out. Cash will then go to another dividend champion or somebody that's willing to increase their payment to us every year. VF Corporation, that's a recent example of such a cut where we sold out of that position almost immediately and now we're free. We have that cash freed up and we're looking to replace that position. We're currently rebuilding the strategy from raw data right now and we'll produce an update to that report. Now we have some concerns here that are uh, bigger than 3M and really it's that the importance of financial track records at companies is starting to become overshadowed or even directly affected by this ESG DEI tripe. It's a threat and we're aware of that threat and that's why we denounce it for what it is. It's poisonous to shareholders, the companies themselves, the employees. All stakeholders lose from this stuff. Even the people that these DEI policies purport to protect lose. Now, America's litigious society is going to start bankrupting some of her greatest companies if judges don't start uh, using some common sense here to see what's going on with these lawsuits that can threaten to eradicate some of America's greatest innovative companies like 3M. Both of these factors the uh, strong push with ESG and DEI and America's uh, litigious society are threats to our quantigent strategy. And it's one of the reasons why we're pushing towards looking at uh, diversification into non-American domiciled firms. So lots of our paying subscribers have asked us to expand the quantigent strategy into other markets such as the UK or Europe. And indeed, we're looking at doing that. Now, just to conclude... There's too much uncertainty surrounding the earplug lawsuits to be adding shares right now to get that 5.75% yield. That's uh, our take on the situation. Uh, the risk reward here is really not known. Once there's closure around the earplug lawsuits, then investors can start to assess damages. You can speculate all you want regarding outcome, but that's all you can do. And that's the nature of legal risk. Ultimately, the judge decides and it's anybody's guess as to what that decision might be. Um, result in for 3M. Risk-averse investors like us, we don't gamble on uncertain outcomes. So the only approach we're taking is that should 3M stop increasing their dividend, we'll sell the stock immediately and find another. Other than that, we just uh, don't pay much attention to all the noise. We sell dividend growth stocks for one reason only. After we've made that decision to invest in them, there's one reason. It's when they stop increasing dividends. I'm going to put up another video here that you might find interesting. Before you watch that, please click the Nanalyze logo on the right. Subscribe to our channel. Support our work. Thanks for taking the time to watch this today.